in the tank? A Queensland innovator with a product that's as Aussie as the great outdoors. Hi Sharks, my name's Tracy Bykoff. I'm here representing Far North Queensland and my award-winning product, the Original Rescue Swag. Assisting me today is my mum, Karen, and my twin sister, Michelle. I'm seeking $220,000 for 20% equity in my company. Let me set the scene for you. Imagine you're out horse riding with friends, you're having a lovely time, when suddenly disaster strikes. Your friend is thrown to the ground, her horse galloping off into the distance. You can see she's got immense pain in her arm. What do you do? You're an energy company employee. You're out on your four-wheeler checking a remote station when suddenly a brown snake launches from the long grass and strikes at your leg. You know you need compression and you need it now, but the first aid kit's back in the car on the highway. What do you do? I have the perfect solution for both these situations, the award-winning Original Rescue Swag. It is a comprehensive first aid kit that also doubles as a sling, a splint, a compression device and a water carrier. This kit is the ultimate in portability. Using the fit and forget lockdown system, you can attach it to any mode of transport without it bouncing or bumping around. By proportion and design, this kit is perfect to stow in boats and vehicles. Need to call for help? carry your mobile phone in the easy access external pocket or we can also fit you out with a personal locating beacon which is hooked up to rescue satellite networks. Sharks, I need $220,000 to boost this product to fly like a red balloon. We have a talented team, an entrepreneurial spirit and the building blocks of success. Show you've got swag, Sharks. Take a bite of this. That deserved a clap. That was very good. Well done. Great pitch. Great pitch, Tracy. Thank you. Where, where are you guys from? From Ariba. Oh, up near Lake Tinaroo. Yes, Yeah, great. nice. All right. <laughs> Queenslanders, good to hear. Yeah. So um, talk about your sales and date. So um, we started this in 2012, won an innovation award. In 2013, I put six months of my full-time effort into this and we sold $12,000 worth in 2013. 2014, we've actually sold $30,000 worth. So what is the average price per swag? At the moment, we're selling these online for $220. And what is it costing you to put them together and make them? At the moment, they cost us $100 to produce and then I need to pack them as well. However, I do now have a manufacturing solution that will halve those costs. What's the stuff that goes inside? What does that cost? Um, the stuff inside is $47.30. How much do you think you can get the other stuff down by? Um, I think I could get it down to at least 30. And you could change what you put inside Correct. by That's country what I'm too. To, yeah. Because, for example, a United States market or a exactly. European market might want different things inside it. Exactly. Tracy, what did you do before you got into this business of rescuing us all? <laughs> um, well, I've worked in a few different jobs as a teacher and a prison officer. Um, this really came about because I'm a horse rider and I didn't have a first aid kit that I could carry. It actually sits behind the saddle. It doesn't bounce around or bump on the horse, which, you know, every other solution is something that flaps around yeah. and is really annoying. So I know that there is a need for this. I'm assuming you have some sort of patent or trademark on that? Correct. It's, we have the trademark on the um, branding. Sorry. That's do you right. each Thank want you. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can pass one along, it's fine. Oh, OK. So we do have the trademark already. We are working towards the patent that covers the international sector. Yeah. Once that's approved, we can then file for different uh, countries. And so what, what's the, what's the 220000 being used for, please? Half of that amount is for manufacturing. Obviously, we need to market this product, so there's allocation for that. Patent costs will be incorporated in that as well. Are you validated over a million? How did you arrive at the valuation? I understand its potential value. I anticipate 8,000 units sold within one calendar year of launch, resulting in $1.6 million in income. Do you know what 8,000 means? Absolutely. Do you know how many a day that is? Yep, I've how done many? the cash flow. How many? And how it's many 800 day? a month. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 30 a day. I, I fundamentally don't believe you're going to hit that next year.
Have you made any large corporate sales? Have you presented to a mining company or a corporation where they bought 20, 50, 100 at a time? I've done uh, probably about 20 at the maximum. 20 um, in one bite? Correct. To value a company at that, what that means is you have to sell so many before you can return uh, the investment. It just makes it that much riskier and that much harder. On this particular construct of the deal, I'm out. OK, thanks, Naomi. You have a vision for it, which is, is all the big ticks. The valuations I do have a problem with. Sure. It's, um, it's too early to ask for that much for okay. it. It's not, it's not worth that yet. Sure. That is the only reason I'm out, but um, I will definitely be a customer of yours. Awesome. I'll be happy with that. Thank you, Janine. <laughs> I'd love to show you our new prototype too, if you'd like to have a look. This is actually the aspect that is going to eliminate the number one problem for first aiders, people panicking and not knowing what to do. If you're bitten by a snake, you can take your mobile device, scan the snake, and it will give you video instruction on what to do and which items to use as well. Uh, that doesn't actually, you know, float my boat because I think that in the areas that this may get a lot of use, that you, you, you'll have mobile coverage issues. We don't need a SIM card. You don't actually need mobile coverage when you're using it. Oh, all, wow. you, all you need to do is open the phone and scan the chip and it will take you where you need to go to the content that's pre-stored in there. You, you put that in for an innovation award. That's, that sounds really cool. Let's Pretty let's cool. dig into that. How does mm -hmm. that work? I'm, I'm, Would you I'm like a little to bit see? About, is, is it there? Is yeah. it? Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll go and have a look. It's then. just a prototype, so it's not perfect. Okay. So within this prototype, what we've done is inserted a few chips where you see the symbol. So if you scanned over the minor injury, there you go, and it comes up with the video. The content is on an SD card. In the phone? Yes. And not only does it tell you what to do, but it directs you as to which items to use. You're the first person that I've seen tell Steve something about tech that he didn't know. <laughs> I understand how it works now. I understand how yeah, it works that, now. That's, that's all right. That's <laughs> a first. <laughs> I'd be very interested in the US market. I think there's definitely a market for it there. And I haven't seen anything quite as clever as that. I've been in and around boats and horses and things. I think you're really onto something. I certainly believe in you and the product, but um, I'm a bit concerned about your the where you are in your manufacturing scalability. Sure. Ah, it's tricky. I'm tempted. I'm really stuck because for me to make this work, I'd have to take too much of your company at this point in its development. I think on the basis of that, at this point, I'm out. Thanks, Andrew. This was a fantastic pitch in terms of the Thank way you, you presented it. I love backing people as opposed to products. But the outdoors and the camping sort of area is not my specialty. I'm out. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Steve, where are you at? I do business because it's good business. Right. I like doing business with good people. Sure. But that, that doesn't, you know, it, it, it's still good I actually work at the end of the day. To me, it's worth about 250,000 bucks at this point in time, which is not an offer you'd like. I'd love to work with you, Steve. To me, it's worth about 250,000 bucks at this point in time, which is not an offer you'd like. I'd love to work with you, Steve. So, uh, I want to try and make you an offer. I reckon I could think better if I was sitting on a quad bike. Oh, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Uh, any In excuse. Oh, it's any a toy excuse. double seater with a horse. Yeah. I Steve, could we pretend it's raining and I throw some water over you? Just to... <laughs> this, is, oh, this is cool. Here we go. Um, so the full amount, $220,000. 100000 of which will be equity for 40% of the business. The remaining 120 will be as uh, repayable on a royalty. Mm -hmm. 
at 10 bucks a unit. So he takes $10 of every product sold to pay down the 120 debt. Right. And the other 100 is for 40% 40%. of your company. Let's do it. Oh, there you go. That was easy. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks, Mum. Well done. Well, done. Mom, oh, you make some really sorry. And Steve, well I'll done. give you a fifty thousand dollar option for the US Thank rights. You. Oh, okay, done. All right. Look forward Thank to getting the business so going, Grant. Right. Well Cheers, done, ladies. Bye. Lovely to meet you all. See you. Bye. bye. <laughs> Age is no barrier to building a great business. And the shark's next meal is someone who won't slow down. My name's Peter, I'm from Adelaide, I'm 72 years old. And I've uh, invented a, a small solution for a major, major problem. At the time that I came up with the idea, most of my friends were looking to retire. That's not my scene. I've always been motivated to keep going. I've never really stopped and thought, hey, I should retire, uh, do I want to retire? Um, that question has never ever come up. When you sunk a quarter million dollars into it, you can't give up. <laughs> well, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but uh, if I wasn't, I think I'd be more concerned. If you're not pumped up to go into there now, um, I think you're going to fail. Hello Shark Tank team, um, my name's Peter Coleman. I'm from Adelaide um, and I'm the inventor of a product called Mini Pallets. Um, it's a very, very simple product. If you don't get the idea very quickly, uh, there's something wrong with one of us. <laughs> um, just to give you a bit, little bit of the background, um, there's 50,000 back accidents reported every year through bad lifting practices. There's a very, very simple solution and I don't believe anybody in the world has come up with the product that I have. Um, and I just... Peter, just before you go on, how much are you looking for in your investment? Uh, $200,000. $200,000, yeah. Uh, for 20%. 20%, right. Yeah. Cartons get delivered everywhere, so somebody's got to come along and lift that. If it's real heavy, uh, it's probably got to be two people. There's a real danger there, potential for back accidents. I came up with a product, it's called a mini pallet. And the, the basic idea is this, when product's delivered, comes off a production line or gets delivered to a store, instead of going on the ground where they've got to be lifted again, they're put on a mini pallet. All you do is slide a hand cart underneath, wheel them off. Hmm. Put them down. Can I have a look at the product? Yeah, of course you can. How long have you been doing this? How long has this been in existence for? Uh, about six or seven years. Okay, and how, what, can you talk through the, the cost to make, cost to sell, what's your business model and mm. impress us with numbers? Yeah, all right. Um, we've sold about 100,000. Oh, um, shit, okay. Last year was fairly good. So what are you selling for? $12. Well done. What are the costs of making them? Uh, around about $5. And you sell for 12 Is that retail 12. or wholesale? No, that's, re that's retail. You've got another product over there that's round. Do you want to just finish explaining that to us as well? This is called a garden pallet. Right. Um, and it's used basically to move pot plants. Yeah. Now, they are heavy, and they can break your yeah. back if you lift them. We reckon we can drop the divorce rate by about 50%. <laughs> is this solving any real problem? I'm looking, I'm like, what is it? I don't get it. You actually have to put your box on this yeah. in order to actually more easily transport your box. Yeah. So if you don't put your box on this, you've still got to lift your box up and put your box on this. You only got to put it on once. Okay. Can I ask you how you sold your 100,000 and where do customers come from? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. We've sold about 30,000 to uh, Australia Post and we've sold them to wineries, pubs, clubs, uh, printers. We made about $80,000 last right. year. What do you think next year will be? Well, it depends a lot on, on a couple of things we're working on. We are now talking to a company in the States. We've got 5,000 outlets. Now, if they take 10 only each, 
There's 50,000 mini pallets. Okay. Peter, let's assume I invest with you. What's the big, hairy, audacious goal to get this business to be worth 10 million? Uh, probably the contacts in the do-it-yourself stores in the United States, like right. Lowe's. So and Home and Depot. All, Home Depot, yep. Okay, Peter, you've answered my question. I'm in 200,000 for 25%. Oh. So you got one bid on the table. I think the business is a pretty simple business model. All we've got to do is get a significant customer like Home Depot in the US yep. and provide cash flow without you having to do too much. Yep. We okay with that? Yep. You're on the board. <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty excited. I'm not too sure about the 25%, but... Peter, um, I, I know where I am with this one. I don't know if I'm the right person for you, but I think you've done a great job. And Thank you. congratulations on where you've got the business today. But I'm out. Thank you. Um, I almost want to do something, but I don't quite believe in the product. And yeah. I'm probably wrong, yeah. right? But I, I can't breach that gulf. So I'm going to wish you all the best. I'm out. I really do hope you get a deal to here, mate. That'd be good. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, I actually do believe in the product, absolutely. Yeah, I'll match Andrew, 200,000 to 25%. I think my experience in, in supply chain logistics is a bit deeper than his. Yeah. Uh, but he's probably got some contacts in America that may be useful to you. So you have two offers on the table for 200,000 for 25%, the same offer, and you've got one more shark to go. So Peter, let me tell you where I'm up to. I do see the consumer yeah. market as really important to this. I also see your global market as important. So I am going to make you an offer but there are a few dependencies. Right. One is it's $300,000 for 40%, and that's on the basis that I split it with Andrew. So in other words, I haven't even checked with him, by the way, but that is because I see what he's gonna bring, which is the US market and a global application, and I also know that you'll need some hand-on support in Australia. So to make it worth our while, 20% each seems like a fair and reasonable thing. There's a lot of work still to be done. Yep. You've got good traction, but I want to see this to be a mega business, and I know that's going to take She's my time and energy. She's giving you a haircut, by the way. That's a hit called a haircut, Peter, in anyone's language. Did you want to go up and do a counter-offer to them? Yeah, um, the 40 per cent is, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, 300 grand, I reckon, is a bit low. Very uh, low, Peter. What's really important is the value of the 60%. You're smart enough to know that. That's really what's important. The rest is rubbish. What about 400,000 400, for 40%? And that's 200 grand each. And your expertise from both your companies, what you've got in the States, what you're building in the United Kingdom and the States. Why don't we split the difference? 350 for 40%. Come on, let's do the deal. Don't take the haircut, you don't need to. 4,400, you got yourself a deal. So basically he's getting what he wants, but two <laughs> investors. <laughs> do, you nego do you negotiate like this all the time? <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm too soft. I we're getting the haircut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a deal. <laughs> you got the wrong shark. I got the last one first. No, I don't you don't, you don't get up. <laughs> yeah, Congratulations on Thank you. You're going Thank that you. way. See you, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bring it in. <laughs> Wow! Ooh, big one. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you very much. How's that little heart of yours? Better now. I'm happy. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur who thinks his business is a safe bet. I hope the sharks have brought their fat wallets along. I think I'm going to nail it. Good evening, Sharks. My name is Andrew Leary. I'm 53 years of age and I live in Sydney. Tonight we're looking for $390,000 for 10% of the Buckle Me Up enterprise. Thanks for the opportunity to introduce Buckle Me Up, which was conceived by a group of firemen some years ago who had seen firsthand the tragedy 
of children being killed or injured in car accidents that were unbuckled. There's over one billion cars in the world today on our roads, and 98% of those cars have seatbelt warning devices to the front seat. Yet 87%, 87% of cars don't have them in the back seat where our precious cargo travel. Buckle Me Up is a worldwide patented, first ever wireless retrofit seatbelt alarm and safety system that simply clicks on to your seatbelt buckle like an e-tag. Buckle Me Up is paired with your smartphone via a free app that will alert the driver of the car if the person in the back seat unbuckles. Buckle Me Up can also be used in a number of other applications, such as in school buses. So sharks, buckle me up, you'll never look back. There you go. <laughs> hey, well done. Hey, that's nice. Well done, Andrew, and that's uh, valuing your business at $3.9 million, 390000 for 10%. Wow. So uh, I guess you better show us how it works. Well, what I'd love is to invite two of the sharks to sit in the back seat. So who'd like to come forward? Well, you're little. I'm going in the back seat with Janine. Does buckle me up include shut me up? <laughs> so for the purposes of this exercise, Steve and Janine, they're my children in the back seat. <laughs> I now hit the app, and this will tell me through a green signal that two of my passengers are buckled up. So now, Steve, you're a naughty boy. You've dropped your toy, and without telling Daddy, you have to pick your toy up. So now what we see is a visual on my smartphone. Because Janine looks up to her older brother, monkey see, monkey do, so, Janine, you unbuckle. And we'll see Janine's also go red. Oh, my God. These kids are out of control. Hey, I like it. It's simple. It worked. I can remember driving down 30, 30 years ago with a five-year-old son in the back, and I turn a corner and suddenly the back door of my car opens and my son, who's five years of age, has taken his seatbelt off because his hat has fallen on the floor. He grabs hold of the seatbelt. I'm hitting the brakes and I get out of the car and he's under the back wheel and it's this far away from going over it. And I will never forget that, that vision. Scary. This is a great product. There's, there's an amazing problem out there. Yeah, 100%. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Good, thank you. Is this product market ready? And does it work 100% of the time? This product is 100% market ready. Uh, and we have, have it fully accredited. What have you spent to date? Well, to date, we've spent over $2 million, which was in my home, which I've sold to put into this business. Wow. OK. Hello, Vicar. That's a lot. Do you have any sales so far, Andrew? Yeah, we've got a, an order from a large bus company that have ordered 200 um, buses to be fitted out. So how much is that in dollars? $1.9 million. Wow. So are we investing in the uh, everything? We invest in the operating company, the IP. Is it, is it a whole group or are there parts that sit outside the investment? Okay. What you're investing is, is Buckle Me Up, PTY, LTD, yep. which has the sole and exclusive licence to use the patent worldwide for a seatbelt application. So we don't own the licence. We don't... We have the use of it. We don't own the IP. So you own the patents. Yep. So that's in one company. Yep. And then another company is licensed, which is called Buckle Me Up, to use it. So this one is paying royalties to that one yes. to use it. Yes. Correct? Yes. yes. How much is that? It's a per, um, per purchase. Yeah. At this point, to start off with, it's 5%. So who owns this company? M myself. OK. So you're offering us 10% of another company. Correct. That's not going to fly, right? No. You're basically asking us to pay you for this, but get no actual effective ownership of it. 
and you've taken a 5% clip. It's actually, it's actually a poor deal. So in actual fact, we could together do a deal. We could be burning cash 100 miles an hour. So we could be losing money and you're going, that's OK, I'm still making 5%. You could be making millions and we could be losing money. The reason why I didn't put a hold of spot is because of the uncertainty associated with going forward with the yet to be completed. No, no. You thought that you could take money off the top line and you'd be OK, and the risk is with us. You sit on the beach, you do nothing for it, you get 5% of the sales, and we take all the risks. And remember, I've got 90% skin in it as well. So if you're hurting at 10%, I'm hurting at 90%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're but, fine. But what, you've got you've got a, what, no, you're what, not. Right. Because you've still got your 5% off the top. So what you're basically saying is you need to feel sorry for me, right? But this is a heart. The smallest one in the world playing for you, right? For your, heart, for your broken heart. That doesn't matter. This is investment, right? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to do that to us? Why are you trying to do that to an investor? Why be tricky? Whenever a tricky structure gets set up, the first thing in my spidey senses go, something's being hidden here. I'm, uh, uh, someone's out to do me a disservice. Andrew, I, I can tell you where I am at. In business, I think if things are really struggling and they're, they're just they're grinding its gears, often there's a reason. And in this case, I actually think the reason might be you. You've got an unusual structure. And just looking at you and listening to you, I ask myself, could I work with you? And I'm sorry, the answer is no. So for those reasons, I'm out. Um, I'll tell you where I am. When I work with people, I like it all to be nice and transparent and upfront. And if I have to dig for things, I can't work with you. I'm out. Sure. Thanks. Would you sell the whole company? Beg your pardon? Would you sell the whole company? I believe that for me to invest money in this business, I prefer to have a very, very large say. That means owning it. As in the parent company as well? Uh, I'm talking about everything I need to operate this. I'm talking about... Yeah, sure, I'd be interested in selling that. So I'll make an offer for 100% of the business. I'm willing to pay you 1.5 million bucks. Andrew Leary is asking for $390,000 for 10% of his seatbelt safety business. His complex business structure... So we don't own the IP. ...has caused two of the sharks to bow out. But Steve has made an offer of $1.5 million for 100% of his business. I prefer to have a very, very large say. That means owning it. I, I want to thank, thank you for the offer. I want to see if there are uh, any counter offers. I'm more than happy to, to, for you to entertain the amateur, amateur hour down the end there. When I do business with people, it is actually a partnership. This is like a first date, but then we go on a journey together and ultimately we want to get married and create something great. At the core, all business is based on trust. So for this deal, I'm out. Thank you. Three sharks are out, two sharks left. Andrew, I think your product is very relevant. But for me, today, it's not an investment, so I'm out. Thank you. What are you going to do? There's a lot of things to think about, but I understand I'm here to, to consider offers, and Stephen's made me one. We actually are here to do deals, yep. not just consider them. The clock is ticking here, because the, the more I look at these numbers, I get concerned as to why, why haven't, why isn't this an amazing, life-saving thing actually done what it's supposed to do? I think his little feet are starting to shake. Right, you're not in this deal. There's been a range of reasons, right, for that, which I don't know yet. Believe in yourself, Andrew. So, Steve, what, what I would uh, accept would be a $2 million, um, 100%. Take out. If anyone can take this business, it's Steve. I really believe that. And he might even give me a job. That's for discussion, maybe. Um, 
No, I'm not going to negotiate against myself. You should have kept one of these four in the game. So uh, if you're at two, we're probably not going to meet. Is that where we're at? Yeah. Mate, I wish you all the best. I'm Thanks. out. Thanks, Steve. Good luck. Yeah, Andrew. Good I luck. I hope it works. It's a great product. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Wow. <laughs> Andrew, how are you feeling? That was a roller coaster ride in there. Yeah, no, look, it was uh, it was interesting. It got pretty brutal in there at times. How did you handle that? Yeah, look, I tried to, to answer as honestly as I can. Overall, the deal couldn't be done. But that's life. You move on. I think it was a cheeky offer. I don't think it was cheeky. Did you see how quickly he went to sell his whole business? <laughs> Next to face the sharks, an inventor who wants to shine new light on an age-old medical problem. Hi, my name is Jennifer Holland and I'm the sole owner and inventor of ThroatScope Illuminated Tongue Depressor Medical Device. I'm asking for $76,000 for 10% equity in my company. In December 2009, I took my baby to the doctors. He seemed to be suffering from a sore throat, so the doctor got out his wooden tongue depressor in one hand and his handheld torch in the other. He then asked me to restrain my child whilst he pried open his mouth with the wooden tongue depressor. This was quite distressing. I walked out that day wondering why. Why had this traditional method not been modernised? Introducing ThroatScope Illuminated Tongue Depressor Medical Device. ThroatScope is a one-hand operated device with a light source located inside the mouth for fast, accurate diagnosis. ThroatScope is a first of its kind for oral cavity examination worldwide. ThroatScope has been designed for GPs, hospitals and the general public. You simply take the disposable blade and slide it onto the reusable handle. This will automatically activate the light. You take one hand, hold your patient's head in place whilst completing your oral cavity examination. Once you have finished, a one flick action removes the blade and extinguishes the light. Thank you. Thank well you. Great done. job. You did a good job. So Jennifer, that was 76,000 for 10%, just to clarify. Correct, yes. Right, okay. And there's nothing in the marketplace like it. There is nothing currently on the market for in-home oral cavity examination. This is the first product. Wow. Jennifer, what's your background? Is it in the medical area? Uh, no, it's not in the medical area. I'm actually a financial accountant is my background. What does, it, what does it cost you to make? The full complete unit, one blade and the handle, $3.39. What are you going to sell them for, roughly? In the pharmacies, $29.95 and $9.95 to GPs and hospitals. How much does the disposable piece cost? About 24 cents. So tw it's a 24 cent bit that you pretty well you use once, you toss it in the bin. That's right. The shame of it is that compared to the cardboard one the doctors use, they're about, what, probably two cents? Two to four cents. Yeah, so yeah. it's 10 times the price times the multiples. It starts to sort of add up for them. How do you solve that problem? That's only based on producing 10,000 units, that price. So I'm hoping once it, the, you know, manufacturing goes up, the price is going to come down. How long does the battery last for? The battery can last up to five years, so it's yeah, just a normal no, battery. Just like that. If I left it like that, how long would it, how long uh, would it last I for? I think it would probably last a fair... If you left it on... Have you tried it? I haven't left it on. So it'll last... <laughs> I think it'll last a, a GP, probably one to two years, depending on how many times they use it. The idea is for future, actually, in my patent, I have it as a rechargeable docking station for the device. W what is it you're going to be using the uh, $76,000 for, Jennifer? I'm asking for the money for tooling and for to produce 5,000 units. This is a prototype. It's not a commercial product in the package ready to go. So that's my next step. Right. So you've asked for $76,000, which gives you a valuation of $760,000. Um, how much of your time are you spending in the business and how much do you intend to spend in the business? I get up in the morning, I turn my computer on, I work. I don't stop working. So we can count on you, you to be full care. time in this business? Definitely. I'm not going anywhere. Now, can I ask, is your patent 
shining light through perspex. That's the essence of your paint. It is for the... Nothing to do with putting it in someone's throat. It's also the attachment and how it couples together to um, turn on and off the switch. I mean, Steve, you're more of an expert in that area, but I would have thought that's quite interesting. Uh, is there any medical device issues around this, um, Jennifer? It's a class one medical device, so the regulation is very easy. So it's a, a approval not required effectively, is that what they're saying? Pretty much. Listen, I think I know where I'm at. I like the fact that you've solved a problem, but in my case, I'm generally um, a little concerned about markets uh, like the medical profession where they're highly regulated. So it's not an area where I like to invest. Okay. But I applaud your uh, ingenuity and I'm sure you'll find some customers. I'm out. I just think it's fantastic, the innovation. But it re is really, really early stage. And um, it's a wonderful idea that we don't yet understand a commercial application for. So for that reason, I'm out. I have to say I admire what you've done enormously. To sort of have an idea and then take it from an idea and, and then have a, even a prototype with patents and, and trademarks. The thing that I think that might actually be a barrier for you though is that it's 10 times the price of what they've, also, they've got currently and it's an education for them to go, okay guys, get rid of that at two cents, put this in even if it's a 10 cents or 15 cents. It's just such a big step, barrier step, but please don't take that away as anything other than, than my admiration for what you've done. So congratulations getting it this far. I wish you all the very best, but I'm out. Did we poke into any uh, projected sales revenues or anything like that? I mean, do you have any clue about that? I do. Uh, I'm, my projections for year one, based on um, selling about 30,000 units and about um, a million blades, is about 400,000 after tax. You got you got to sell over 40,000 units gross profit just to get near your valuation mm. of your first year. So it's a big number. Mm. John, Steve. Your single mind and the, your drivenness to sort of participate in this business is fantastic. And I really, really I like that. Full time tick. Your, your background for me isn't technical for how I'd like it, but it doesn't matter that much. This isn't a very technical device. So that's not really going against you. So I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think, though, I'm going to come back and just, just keep collecting my thoughts. Jennifer, it feels like you've sacrificed a lot to get to this point. I think that you not only know your numbers, which is your background, but you have looked at the market, you've looked at the product. I wish it was a little bit further progressed. It is slightly premature, but unfortunately, I'm out. Steve. Is it just me, is it? It is just you. Bugger. What, what do you expect, what do you expect from me, aside from any cash in this arrangement? I, I'm hoping for your connections. I know you have companies in the medical device space. Software. And I'm hoping that you can help me, and I know that you're a startup guy. And stand up guy, I thought she said. <laughs> <laughs> You're a stand up, stand up guy. I have an, a daughter who was diagnosed anaphylactic to peanuts and eggs. And um, she, every time I go to the hospital, it takes two nurses to hold her down while a doctor pries her mouth open with a wooden tongue depressor. I stand there thinking, if, my, if they just had my device, eight times out of 10, my children will open their mouth for that device over a wooden tongue depressor. Can I, can I explore that for one second? I, I've, just, I've just got something. So kids prefer having the light, the, this pretty thing. Nice, shiny object. In their mouth, and they do mouth. the paddle pop stick. On, on balance, there's far more acting against me making this investment than there is for it. 
except the fact that kids will think this is a lightsaber. Um, uh, there are things that concern me, lots of things that concern me. This, this is amazingly over-engineered, I mean, it's nice, but honestly, you throw half this away and you could probably make it for a fifth of much, to be honest. So I, I don't know of the regulatory implications of this, right, which, is, which can make this thing all of a sudden expensive, if not unsaleable in some markets. It is a class one medical device. In Australia. In Australia. Yeah, so I have a piece of software that we're trying to get regulated at the moment. It's regarded as a medical device as well. And, you know, so I know how crazy the rules are in respect to that. I'm standing here, I'm ready. I'm, I've been pushing this for four years. I've had four seizures in five years. Nothing is gonna stop me. If that didn't, nothing will. I'd be willing to look at making an offer. Now you have to know my background, I'm telecoms. Right. I know. All right, I'll do 76,000 bucks for 30% of the company. And then I'd look at a royalty with respect to that. So I would look at, let's say, a 5% royalty on the sale, up to the repayment of $76,000, up to the full repayment, after which the royalty would disappear. I would be left with the 30% equity. I think the royalty is counterproductive to the company to be taking funding out when we're going to need it most. Would you drop the royalty and I'll 30 per cent? I'll be happy to do the deal, but drop the royalty for now. No. He's going to own 30 per cent of the company, so he's not going to let it sit there and if it needs more cash, as long as you've got the business heading in the right direction. We're going to put this lightsaber in the hands of as many doctors, nurses, mums and dads as we possibly can. So that's what we want to do, right? So what's your answer? Just say yes. Yes. Good. I knew before I came into the tank that Steve was the tech guy and I'm just so excited to be working with him and moving forward with our business together. Oh. Well done. She's good. She is great. It's just got that tenacity. Well done. Nice work. <laughs> First into the tank are three doctors looking to change the face of patient care on a global scale. My name is Dr. Raghav Morali Ganesh. I'm Dr. Nikhil Pavai. And I'm Dr. Martin Senevaratna. And we are the founders of a company that is going to improve cancer care on a global scale. Hi, is it Josh, is it? Yes. Hi, Raghav, one of the doctors. Hello, how are you going? Good. My goal as a doctor, and as is with many doctors, is to improve the quality of the care that is delivered in and out. One more time. I take pride in the work that I do. Thanks for that. And I, I, I see that this solution will improve the lives of not just one patient sitting in front of me, but perhaps hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, locally, internationally. This is something that probably a lot of patients out there you know, want to know about. Living with cancer is a very isolating experience. I think the Sharks will be really interested in this project because it's one that will really help patients. It's something that's been built out of okay. real-world experience at the hospital. Oh. I'm Martin, one of the residents here. With the patient at the centre of the design process. Anything different today compared to your previous chemo session? No, it's not that, not that bad at the moment. Investment from the Sharks will allow us to take this product internationally. That's where we hope the sharks can come in Ooh. and help us achieve this goal.
Hi Sharks, I'm Dr Nikhil Pavaya, this is Dr Raghav Murali Ganesh and this is Dr Martin Senevaratne. We are the founders of CancerAid. CancerAid is an app that empowers cancer patients and their caregivers. Our proposal today is for $500,000 at a pre-money valuation of $5 million, equating to 10% equity. CancerAid is already the number one cancer app in Australia, US and UK. We are providing patients with personalised cancer information. Normally when we see new patients in clinic, we discuss all this information verbally, but we don't necessarily provide them with anything written. CancerAid allows patients to take the app home, read the information and digest it at their own pace. We are providing a journey organiser. This is where patients will be able to log their symptoms, medications and their medical records. Living with cancer is a very isolating experience. So our Cancer Aid community, similar to Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter, allows patients to connect with others going through similar experiences. We want to empower patients and improve their quality of life. Cancer Aid has a unique business model. We license our app across three customer segments. Cancer institutions, research organisations and private cancer specialists. This allows us to provide the app free to patients. Our year one projected revenue is $1.6 million. Impressive. We know each of you here can help scale our business. And that's what we want the investment for, is to actually set up sales specialists in the US and the UK. Cancer patients expect, need and deserve timely access to the best possible care. And CancerAid aims to achieve this. Let's help improve cancer care on a global scale together. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Wow, that's very impressive, gentlemen. And uh, just to confirm, 500,000 for 10%, so as you say, a valuation of 5 million. What brought you together on this journey? Why? Our experience working as clinical doctors, there's various issues that we see day to day. We interact with patients, caregivers every day, and it was our solution for you know, an archaic system that we can improve. A lot of the apps that come out, they don't know who the end user is. So they'll design a prostate cancer app for the seven-year-old prostate cancer patient who's never gonna use an app. It's his daughter who comes into clinic who's gonna be organizing his journey. So very early on, we identified who our end user is, and that's what we've made today. I'm, like a lot of people my age, have been close to cancer, and I do understand the chaos associated with suddenly being thrown, your life suddenly changes one morning, and you don't even remember, you know, half of what's being thrown at you. Is that the kind of feedback from patients that sent you this way? Exactly. We've had such great positive feedback from what we've done. I think the secret sauce really is the community. That's yeah. what we've found to be really sticky amongst patients. They keep logging into the app because there is a community that they can access through the app. So walk us through that commercial model, just so we understand it. So the patient gets free access. Yep. Give me the commercial structure. How do you actually make money out of it? We license the app on an annual licensing fee to institutions which provide care to cancer patients. And does that license fee vary depending on the size of the organisation? Exactly. We've set that licensing fee at $100,000 per cancer institution, $50,000 for a research organisation, and $5,000 to a private specialist. So that's a fairly big buying decision, $100,000. I'm sitting there as a CFO of a cancer institution and go, that's 100,000 I can't put into something else that would have helped ease the patients in this, this facility. You're going to enhance the patient experience, not just with the patient, but also with the institution. And it helps the doctors. Exactly. It's brilliant. So what are your revenues to date? $170,000 in signed term sheets. All right, so, wait a second. You don't have 170,000 bucks in revenue yet. Because we've signed, signed term yet. sheets and we've, they've deposited prepayments totaling 10K. All right, this is really important because these guys are really good at not paying. I'm sorry, but the medical industry, I've, I've got several health investments, horrible to sell to. I think it's an easy sell. I agree with you, generally the medical industry is a tough sell and a pain, but this is, this is different. I can see this being huge in the US, and I know how to scale and build scalable businesses. Plus, frankly, you're making a difference in the world. That's pretty important to me in terms of where I put my money. I'm in. 500,000 for 10%. Thank you. Wow. Amazing. I would love to work with you guys. So oh, wow. that's thank you. That's very nice. So I, I'm certainly in. My offer is $500,000 for 10%. Well, that's what my offer was and I was first. All right, well, <coughs> I'm in. 500,000 for 10%. Sounds like then I should make a bid as well. 
Cheers. It's just simply 500,000 for 10%. Thank you. Thanks. Steve? Um, look, to be honest, I mean, these, these guys honestly have got a bloody clue about how hard this is going to be. Oh, excuse all me? Um, and you, you don't want dumb money in this. And, um, so clearly he's going to be hard to get along with. OK, so can we, all right, can we just get clarity? Where are you at? Where's Stephen? He's out. I'm not out. You'll be out if they say yes to one of us. Doctors Nick, Martin and Raghav have sparked a bidding frenzy amongst four of the sharks with their cancer aid app. I'm in. I'm certainly in. I'm in. Sounds like then I should make a bid as well. So you've got four sharks here that have offered you, that have given you what you want, which is $500,000 for 10%. Remaining shark, Steve Baxter, is on the fence and yet to commit. OK, so can we, all right, can we just get clarity? Where are you at? Where's Steve at? Uh, I'm sitting on it. I'm, I, got on a, I, I, I know how hard this is. All right, so you're out. Andrew's getting in by sure. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to get things moving, you know. Steve? I'm not sure you're asking for enough money. And I, and I think actually like in a year's time, you're going to say, well, I think we need to raise three million bucks just to survive the crazy sales cycle. Please pick well. This is tough. You're going to need some really, really good help here, OK? Fair enough. Thank you, Steve. I'm out, but I do wish you all the best. So Steve's out. All the four of us are in. 500,000 for 10%. So who do you think you'd like to work with? Can we have a think about this? Yeah, you want to go outside and have a talk about it? Certainly. My personal view is this is going to be really easy. <laughs> Off you go. OK, thank you. We'll be back in a very short time. This is a no-brainer. Yeah. And I love what it does. Um, what are your that thoughts? That was better than we could ever have hoped for. Uh, it's a shame Steve um, come on board. Going into this, we, we put Andrew at the top. So I think if it's only one, we should put Andrew. This thing makes money quickly. I think very quickly. They're just clever guys. Don't you want to work with clever guys? Oh, I'm really pro Glenn. Glenn would be better with Cus, trust me. Andrew, you, you might have me, but I think my network, seriously, is probably the better one. I would never dispute your network. Gentlemen, what is your decision? You've had four sharks offer you basically what you asked for, 500,000 for 10%. One shark is out. Where are you at? We, 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 we want a collection. We want to collect sharks. <laughs> we, we want to pick two. Andrew and Glenn, we offer you guys 5% each for the same valuation. What we think can benefit is that you both leverage off each other's contacts. That way we also benefit and you both also benefit. That's what I'd like. Now, if you guys can work together. Andrew, we need to make a quick little chat. I don't need a moment. I'll give you 500,000 for 9%. It's not the money, money. Okay. 500,000 for 11%. <laughs> okay. It is about, it is slightly about the money as well. Okay, but just it's check about it. the contacts. We, we'd like you guys to work together. Yeah. It's just not enough equity. 20%. But your percentage growth will be higher with another person on board, as would ours. It sounds like Glenn might be keen to work with you. Um, we'd be keen to work with both of you guys. So there's no way you'll take one of us? We want two. We walk out without a deal tonight if you We won't walk out without a deal because that's stupid, I think. Um, so we want to, we want both you guys. In my head, I know that your, your equity will raise higher if both of you are involved. That's my genuine belief. It's not enough equity. I think you've got to make a decision one or the other. All right, I'm back in. So he said he's out. I'm not out. He said he was out. I'm with Glenn. Think about that for a second. We probably need a moment just to discuss whether I want to work with him. <laughs> just imagine what those board meetings are going to be like. <laughs> Come on, guys, this, this, is a, this is a medical app that impacts people's lives. That's why I got in straight away, Steve. Andrew and Glenn, you guys believe in us. You've been, in, you've been very supportive. So we, if you guys can work together, let's do it now. We'll do the deal. Glenn, you want to work with me? Okay, I'm good. All right, we're done with you. Woohoo!
fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good to meet you. I am so proud of you guys. We can't wait to grow as a business, you guys. Fantastic. You're on your way, guys. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Let's go help some patients. Amazing. That was great. They tick all the boxes for me. That pitch had to be one of the most difficult pitches we've ever done. We're really looking forward to working with Glenn and Andrew. It's going to be great. So having them on board will grow this business. There's no doubt about that for us. I think we can work together. No, I think we can, but I just want you to know that this is cancer for people, not animals, OK? Yes, I know. Just wanted to remind you. <laughs> <laughs>